Falling on your feet, do you finally see what you're missing? You're just one lost soul here to break the mold When you see me, do you believe in a higher love? Somebody let the sun come up again What you need is the heat of the summer Lost your mind, need the light to recover I swear we're headed on the better days And the sun will come up again Cause you brought me the sun What's up, Reefers? Welcome back to another episode of Zoa Tank Boys. We got the Reef Squad here. In this, in this episode, we're gonna be rescaping the 90.3. Let's go. So as you just saw in this episode, we're going to be redoing the Aquascape in the Waterbox 90.3. So we got all the boys here. Yeah, yeah. So today, is it's going to be kind of like a long day because Henry has a lot of coral. He has a lot, a lot of rock. And the reason we're going to redo the Aquascape is we want to maximize his rockscape. Um, we want to create more caves. And he did have some coral on the sand bed and we want to lift them up. So let me show you a little bit of what this tank looks like, and then we're gonna take all the corals out, and we're gonna jump right into it. All right, guys, so here we have the water box. There's a lot, a lot of arch rocks. Now, the glare's a little tough, but hopefully you guys can see. Check out that selfing tank. Stunning, stunning, stunning specimen. But yeah, Henry, how long has the tank been running? About six months. Yeah, it looks pretty good. He just overcame some cyanobacteria, and the sand bed looks Pretty, pretty put together, so everything looks great. What are you hoping to accomplish in re redoing the scape? I'm really hoping to accomplish to create more real estate for my corals. There's things that, looking into the, the long run, it's just when, when they start growing out, it's gonna be, you know, creating chemical warfare with each other. And uh, we wanna avoid that in, you know, the present. And um, yeah, so let's set up for uh, future success with this reef tank. And guys, lately, the craziest phases in reefing have been gardens. So we're gonna keep that in mind. We wanna make sure we create space for a Zoa garden, a Euphilia garden, maybe some Blastos, that way everything looks crazy, crazy, crazy. The first thing we're gonna do is pop all the corals off. We're gonna, we got, we got one big frag wreck here and then this is kind of full, but we're gonna slam them in here. The rest of the coral are gonna go in the sump. And we're also gonna pull out some fish. Henry, what fishes are we gonna pull out of here? We're gonna get rid of the banana rice, the Coral Beauty, and possibly our two uh, our two tanks. We have a silken tank and a blue hippo tank. I really want to get rid of them because I have better plans for other types of fish that are more reef safe. When we say getting rid of, we're gonna rehome them. They're going back to the LFS. Why are they going back to the LFS? I've actually been seeing some corals being eaten. So uh, we need to figure out which one it was and I have a pretty good idea. And so we're gonna take care of that problem today. Guys, so he has a Coral Beauty and a Blue Hippo Tang. Now, those fish are 50-50 reef safe. I know, you know, they can be reef safe with precaution. I personally, we were here last night for the Tyson Fury fight, which was insane, bro. Boom! And I gotta be honest, I saw the Coral Beauty nipping at the Holy Grail Micromusa. So I told them, I mean, unfortunately, if you want to keep a successful reef tank, you got to keep an eye on your inhabitants because they do sometimes nip. So we're going to be replacing, removing, rehoming the Coral Beauty. We're also going to rehome that yellow chorus wrasse. And I don't think that's a chorus. Um, maybe it is a chorus. Leave a comment below, guys. But the reason we're going to get rid of that one is because he's killed a ton of his fish. Mm -hmm. Henry, what fish has he killed? He's at lava. I started off with seven chromies. I'm down to the last one. Uh, I came to realize after five of them missing, it was up to the sixth one for me to find out that he had half of his body in his mouth. Yep, and he also ate your six line rats. And I had a six line rats and he, he literally ripped his spine off. Now guys, he is a gorgeous specimen. I mean, if you look at him, that's a gorgeous specimen. It but is. he is uber, uber aggressive. 
So those two will go, and I believe the hippo. Are we replacing? Are we homing the hippo? Yeah, we, I think we are. I'm gonna try to get a yellow, a yellow tank. All That's right. for another video. So we got a lot of work ahead of us, guys. Got everything over here. We're gonna put it to the garage right now. We got filming equipment. Filming equipment. We have testing kits, guys. One of the major things you want to test whenever you are doing something like this. We got some Malro. Is gonna be. What do you think? Uh, nitrates. Nitrite. Nitrite. The key that, yeah, the key that you want to test is your nitrite and ammonia because when you're moving rocks around in your aquarium, um, you could be releasing some gases. So we are we're expecting to do a decent water change and test everything and even dose some bacteria. You guys may find some spikes, stuff like that. This will let you be ahead of the game, guys. And test it the day of, then test it a couple hours later. I would be on my testing game because it's something that's going to develop. All right, guys, so we're going to need a lot of glue because we're going to be moving around a lot of his corals. So a whole bunch of different types of glues. We got the gels. This is personally my favorite. I wish they made them in a bigger tub because to me, this holds on like friggin' cement. We're also going to be using epoxy. So Hector's going to start going in there and start popping off some of these corals. We're gonna start with the torches. That is the New York Knicks torch. Close them up a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna put them on the frag rack. Start all the way in the corner. All the way in the corner. There we go. Yeah, but it's like against the glass. So it's not gonna fall. Be careful not to pop the, the torch from the actual frag plug itself, you know? Well, this one here is actually really, really... Do you have bone cutters? I don't. Okay. All right, that wasn't too bad. There we go. Now, guys, torches do sting other corals. Typically, you could put torches next to each other. For the time being, we're just going to try to be as quick as possible and group them together over here and see if we can put other corals in here, just in the meantime. No one actually has a little plug and it's like inside of a hole. So you're probably gonna have to grab it from the stem. These fat fingers? <laughs> Try to close it up. I'm trying not to take them out the car, man. Guys, look at David, bro. He shows up with his lid without a without a net. Oh, so we're gonna. That's not it. His is outside. Let me go get it. Let me. Yeah, go bring get it in. It. Bring it in. All right. So where are we at so far? So just took a blast off. Okay. Candy cane. What are we supposed to do with that, bro? We have to finish it because I'm tired of my fist jumping out. Did you bring the little roller? Oh, I saw that. Unless it's in here. Unless it's in here. It might be if you're lucky. I'm hoping I'm the lucky type. <laughs> hoping I'm lucky. Oh, man. You would have told me I think I still have mine. Nah, I Guys, you. the net kit did not come with the roller. However, the DIY kit does, but he didn't know that, so it got left. So I guess we'll have to figure that one out. Another time on another episode of Zolotin Bulls. All right, so there we have a hairy mushroom and a pretty cool rock flower anemone. So we're gonna put some of these in the sump. That way it's still in the same water, but we have a little bit more room to play with when rescaping. We just removed 90% of the coral. There's a couple stuff still left. We've got a scoli on the sand bed, a fabia. We've got a huge colony of dragon soul indoor gold that we're gonna leave there. Um, we're probably gonna move them, but for the time being, they'll be fine. Now we're gonna re aquascape the aquarium. We wanna create a lot of negative space um, and give a lot more room for corals to grow and opportunity for the fish to swim a little bit easier. So I'm gonna get up in here and we're gonna start working with this. Let's so. go to town.
And what he's doing is he's trying to be as careful as he can so that way he doesn't stack any rocks on top of the rock flowers. Might be able to, I think we can take that one yeah, off. Yeah, this one we can pop off. Yeah, we can pop this one off. I'm actually gonna put that in the nano tank. So guys, the key with rock flowers is you find the foot Even and little by little you wanna peel it off. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes rock flowers get stuck. See that? Coming off little by little. Yeah. But yeah. you wanna make sure you don't damage the foot. Sometimes it's always good to use um, like a credit card or something with a smooth surface so you can just slowly yeah, that one. peel it off. There's a myth that if you use a, Look, a he was, cold he, he utensil. Was, he had a, oh, he had a snail a little, on him. A little snail on him. <laughs> There's a myth that if you use a, a cold utensil, sometimes they don't like the feel of that cold metal on their skin that they start to peel themselves off. But there you see the rock flower, guys. So we're gonna peel them off. We're getting a, a little tool. Permits all over, so you want to be careful. And of course, be careful with bristle worms. Um, I'm not too worried about them. I've been stung by bristle worms before. It's a, it's a little uncomfortable, but you want to be careful. Okay. I think a metal one would work better, but we could try with this. Yeah, there we go. And he's not hurting it because he's gently maneuvering the, the rock flower. So the but key is to make just, sure the foot's still good. Look at that, guys. Came right off. So, came out perfectly. And the foot, fully intact. Mm -hmm. So this guy's gonna go in Henry's num tank, which is something that still works. So me personally, I love to create that negative space. But you also wanna make sure it's nice and sturdy. And then the main reason why he's doing this is obviously he has a lot of dead space where he can have prime real estate to add more coral. So we're just helping him out with that and just maneuvering the rocks a little better so that way he can showcase his corals better. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's a nice little foot. I like that. See, and to me, Fire. I'm already thinking corals up here, corals yeah. up here. Now, I do want to create some height, but we do have, we only have arch rock. We may have to take a trip to an LFS, guys. Join us on that journey. <laughs> all right, guys, so we just did the aquascape. We're gonna start gluing all the corals back on. Take a quick glance at the aquascape. It's a little messy, a little dirty. We also pulled out some fish, which we're gonna show you which ones we did. To glue the corals, we're gonna use epoxy and some glue. So we're gonna do the glue first. Put a nice little wad of glue. Make sure it's on there. We're gonna epoxy it. Wet it a little bit. And let's put a nice wad of glue there. A little bit more. I'll tell you when to stop. There we go. All right. And this guy. It's gonna go right here. That way he has a lot of room to grow. And you're looking out. Great area for flow. Nice. Bro. Beautiful, bro. That's a good looking spot. It's a, it's a beautiful That's approach. a good looking spot. Okay, pretty happy with that. Okay, you want this one next? Yes, sir. Okay, so now we're gonna do the the green with blue tip. Put some glue. I can't lie, this is way easier with just epoxy. Yeah. Right? So how easy that was to set? I know. Usually we gotta be in there messing with it. I think Manny just learned a new way. <laughs> glue is cool. I didn't. I knew this. I was just stubborn. Give me a little bit more. Perfect. Because the epoxy gets into the this crevices. One, Maybe on that ledge right there? Here? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna put it as back on the ledge as possible and it feels like that. So when he opens up, you have room? Because if I put it there, when he expands, it's gonna be all over him. You okay with that? Yeah, that looks good. You good? Yeah. Okay. You should probably put them on each point. There's another point right here. Yeah, there's another point right there. We could just put them on every, every point. So that way they all have space to grow up and branch out. Okay, this one is? The dragon soul. Dragon soul. Whoop. Alright, so we got some epoxy right here. Guys, I can't wait to show you what everything looks like once it's nice and open. Tip it. Leave a comment below if there's a more efficient way to do the epoxy. This is my first time in years doing epoxy, and I believe it was blue epoxy glue. But leave a comment, let me know if there's a more efficient way. Where do you want this guy? I will put him right here because that's a dragon soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, to create a little bit of contrast. Put the New York Knicks on this, this one here. On that ledge right there on the left? Yeah. Right here? No, no, right, 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 right here. Forward. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Here. All right, guys, take a look at this. Wait until everything starts opening up, but look at the progress we've made so far. Now, Manny, you wanna let them know why you space things out? So, for starters, you're gonna see there's a lot more swimming room, caves. Everything also was put together. We still gotta wipe the glass, guys. Literally, my hand's still wet. With the mindset of growth, right? So, in theory, unless he adds more rock, this aquarium is full of coral and I don't, uh, I can't see anything else being fit in here other than like stuff on the sand bed. So you've got space there. If you look through here, there's a beautiful cave here. I mean, I'm super excited. So let's give it a couple hours. Then we'll come back in here. I'm exhausted. We gotta get something to eat, but. Hey, hey David, you happy? Of course. You happy with the progress? How about yeah. you, Henry? This is your tank. I'm super excited about this tank. This, it was a great outcome, and uh, I appreciate your help, man. Hey, David, are you happy about the tank? Yeah, I'm happy about the tank. You well, sure? Well, wouldn't I be happy about we, the tank? Because we may be doing a future episode, helping another yes, reef water member out. Guys, leave a comment below. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. But now we got to work on the flow and finish up. All right, reefers. So it's been about 30 to 40 minutes since we put all the corals in the aquarium. Look, first of all, look at the aquascape. We have caves, another cave. And best of all, more real estate. Yeah, so this is the water box 90.3. Guys, I'm super happy with the way this turned out. Torches are already ex doing really good polyp extension. And again, we just finished moving these guys around. Guys, look at the Zoa Garden. And these Zoas, again, I just put these in here about an hour ago. So super, super happy with the way it turned down. Got a little Blasto group right there, little Akan Garden, Holy Grail Micro Musa doing phenomenal. Now guys, this tank did suffer a little bit from Cyano and something that we did, we offset the MP10s. So we have one right here, super high. We have one a little lower. So when I back up, you'll be able to see Henry, what are the, what's the intensity levels that we're running? I believe the right side is around like 40% and the left side is 70%. Excellent, and then we up the return pump to 70%. 70%. So guys, the amount of flow that's happening overall in this aquarium is intense. So we should really, really give Cyano a battle. Um, we've been fighting the parameters for everything. I, I, I think everything is gonna be pretty good. This is the button school that he picked up. If you watched the last episode of Zola Tank Boys. So, phenomenal, gorgeous specimen. Check out the blast though, guys. Yep, he looking so happy. good. So guys, leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought of this episode. But yeah, no complaints. All right, Reefer, so before we end this video, we can't forget to give a shout out. So we're gonna put the shout out right here. Don't forget to like and comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Till next time, Zoltan boys, out!